What's up, Turdlings? Today, we're going to be talking about exploration and how to optimize your lineup to push as far as possible so that you can earn as many memento coins per day as possible so that you can level up your heroes and push exploration even further. Turd Tips by Turd Nugent. So first things first, this video is going to be for anybody who's roughly season zero or season one. So when you get your first lineup to level 100s, this strategy may change. When I get there, I'll probably be doing another video for that. But this strategy is specifically going to be when your primary lineup is still in the leveling process. As you can see, my heroes are between 70 and 90 right now. It doesn't matter if your heroes are level 30 or level 90, this strategy will work for you. I also thought it would be relevant to show you that just because you're not a top rank CP player doesn't mean that you can't use this strategy and progress further than other people higher CP level than you. I'm currently rank 13 for CP on my server. For fortress level, I'm rank 20, but an explorer. I'm rank five, and this means I'm gonna be earning more memento coins per day than players who are higher combat level and higher fortress level than I am. So many players are probably already familiar with the concept in this game when fighting against other players, especially that Rebecca and Kelly have attacks that target the enemy hero with the lowest AGI rating. So when you're facing a Kelly or a Rebecca, you typically want your tanks AGI lower than your backline so that your tanks get attacked before your damage dealers get attacked. Now, in most circumstances, you're not going to be facing a Rebecca or a Kelly in exploration. And even if you are, Rebecca is less of a concern but you can probably still get away with not worrying about your tank's AGI being lower than your backline. And because of this, it enables us to level up our tanks higher than we would be if we were doing PvP. Additionally, when we're gearing our tanks, if we're not worried about the AGI concept, we can be putting leveled up armor on the tanks. So I keep spare armor for both my tanks at level 15. I don't care if it's got agility on it. I'm going to be wearing it if I'm not facing a Kelly or a Rebecca in exploration. And this will help my tanks survive longer in the battle against the enemy heroes than they would be had I been using a PVP setup. And that could make the difference of a victory or not. So I keep armor at level zero for my tanks, and then I keep armor at level 15 for my tanks specifically for exploration. And armor includes the helmet as well. Now let's talk about lineup composition. The primary thing you're gonna to wanna to be focusing on is having backline heroes that will deal damage to the enemy's backline. Now, again, since this is PvE and not PvP, we can use Rebecca and Kelly here because the enemy tanks aren't going to be soaking the attacks from the backline. So Kelly and Rebecca are very good heroes for this. I personally think Kelly is one of the very best heroes you can use for this strategy because she can hit the back line with every single attack, which makes her really strong here. Our number one goal for success in exploration is to kill the enemy backline heroes before they use their ability. The more of the backline heroes we can kill before they use their ability, the easier time we will have winning. Some other great heroes you can use for this strategy if you have them higher rank or stronger than the heroes I use. You can look at Marlin, Blanche, Laurel, Benson, or if you're in season one, Galand. Of all those heroes I listed, 
you want to take your two best heroes and those are going to be your highest level heroes those are going to be your primary killing heroes and these heroes are how you're going to win the battle for me it's kin and rebecca since my kelly is a lower rank than those two heroes those two are my primary heroes this kelly actually doesn't need to be this high of level because i don't actually use her for this strategy i recruit kelly's from my alliance in the mercenary recruitment to fill this spot instead of using my own kelly because other players in my alliance have a higher rank kelly than i do i ideally like to recruit kelly and use two other heroes as my primaries for a couple reasons one she's going to be the best hero to recruit whereas others are going to be better to have as your primaries because your recruitment hero may not get their ability off before the enemy heroes do and kelly is going to be the only hero that can actually damage an enemy before they use their ability as a recruitment hero so i think she's number one pick to recruit in the mercenary recruitment from your alliance and then your two primaries are going to be your best backline damage dealers other than her your two tanks it doesn't really matter too much who you use here if you can organize your factions to give you the faction bonus that's pretty ideal but not completely necessary so it's much more important to just use your highest rank strongest heroes where you can so how we ensure that our primary attack heroes go before the enemies do is with our luck score our luck score is going to determine who attacks first in the battle and whoever attacks first gets to use their ability first now there are a few ways that you can push up your luck score the two primary ways being your hero level and your hero rank now those can be pretty limited as to how much you can push them up but there are two other ways that you can increase your luck score the first one being the offhand item on a epic gear luck can roll on either the level 15 or the level 20 slot it can be pretty difficult to acquire a epic gear with luck on it for your hero as you can see i've only been able to acquire one with it in the level 20 slot which is very expensive so if you don't have luck on an epic gear and your hero is not going first in the battle go ahead and equip a purple gear that's level 15 with luck in that level 15 slot and that will help push your luck up a little bit to possibly help you beat another battle or two since your highest level primary damage dealing heroes might be able to go first with that extra luck also once your heroes hit level 80 you can start building statues for them now these statues when you level them up it's going to let you put stats into your hero as you can see with my rebecca i've already been able to give her plus 38 to stats now you get to choose what stat you put those points into and as you can see i've put 38 points into luck those 38 points probably let me push an extra five to ten levels in exploration just from having that statue due to this concept along with some other concepts that i'm sharing in this video i focus one primary lineup i really only care about my number one lineup i have a number two lineup but they are really insignificant compared to the benefits of sinking your memento coins into one really strong lineup there's a lot of different ways that it's beneficial to have one really really powerful lineup 
and exploration is especially one of them because it lets you get more memento coins per hour the further you can push. So I think of it this way. Once my heroes hit level 100, I'll just push exploration as far as I can with that lineup. And then I won't really have to care about exploration anymore. And I can focus on balancing my three lineups with having much more memento coins than other players at my power level. And I will have a much higher daily memento coin output. So my three lineups are gonna level up much faster than somebody who has been balancing three lineups the whole game and not pushing exploration. The last concept I wanna talk about in this video is hero levels. So first thing first, you want your two primary damage dealing heroes to be your highest level heroes. The main reason here is you need those heroes to attack first. That's the most important thing you can focus on. If you can only have one hero attacking first, that's fine. Ideally, you want two. That's what's really gonna win you the battles. So for me, I just recently pushed exploration, so I'm probably not gonna be able to win this battle right now. But as soon as I get that kin to 95, I should be able to win this battle and a few others following it, regardless of what level these heroes are. For your other three heroes, ideally you want them at a balanced level. Right now I have my Kelly at a higher level just because I put some recent points into her to do more PVP stuff, but if I were to start pushing exploration, I would probably reset her and put all three of these heroes to level 75. What that's gonna do for me is maximize the level of the Kellys that I recruit from the Alliance Mercenary recruitment. Those heroes are based on the average level of your five highest level heroes. So reducing Kelly to level 80 would get me enough experience to bump both of these heroes up to level 75. So my average level of my top five heroes would be five levels higher than leaving Kelly as she is. And that would mean my recruited hero is one level higher. The level of the heroes in Alliance Mercenary Recruitment is determined by adding up the level of your five highest level heroes and dividing it by five. So essentially every five level ups you put into one of your heroes, that equals one level up from Alliance Mercenaries. You do need to do that before you recruit. Once you recruit, their level is stuck. So if I recruited a bunch of Kellys and then leveled up one of my heroes, those Kellys are not gonna level up. So make sure you do your leveling of your heroes before you recruit. Also, your least important hero level is gonna be the hero in your lineup that you're replacing for your recruitment. So really, I could have this Kelly at level 75, bump Harmon up to 75, and bump Bolton up to 80 with the experience that I got from only having this Kelly at 75. That would actually get me two more level ups of my recruitment heroes, as opposed to having this Kelly up at 85 here. I'm sure most of you are also familiar that in the satellite dish, we can reset a hero's level back to zero. If they're above level 30, it's gonna cost us 30 diamonds regardless of what that hero level is. That's not too bad of a price considering the benefit that we get from it, from being able to restructure our build, etc. But you don't wanna be doing this all the time because it's gonna get pretty costly. So what I typically do is after I do my pushes and exploration, I might reset one hero, maybe two heroes. Maybe I'll just reset my tanks 
down to a lower level to get their AGI down for PvP for a little while, put that experience into my third hero in my lineup, do some PvP, play the game for a week or two until I get the memento coins to level up my kin and my Rebecca, and then I'll come back in, reset that third hero, put the experience into the tanks, and push exploration another 10, 15, 20, 25 levels at one go. I'll do this over the course of three, four, five days. And then once I'm at my limit and can't push any further, I'll come back in and reset to a PvP build. So this is really only costing me maybe 150, 200 diamonds every three to four weeks, which isn't too bad. And it's really that cost is letting me get so much further in exploration while still being able to partake in PvP, do well in the arena, do well in the summit arena. I'm pretty consistently top 10 in arena and top five in summit arena, even though I really only have one lineup and that lineup is focused on exploration, not PvP. Now, we can take a look at how I still manage to do Summit Arena with a PvP build, or sorry, a PvE build. Since Summit Arena is focused on PvP, what I do here is I just take my primary heroes, so you can see Kin and Harmon are two of my primary heroes. And then Rebecca, Kelly, and Bolton are my other three primary heroes. Then I just take some heroes that I have of a good rank. I put their level up a little bit to where it's still not too costly. Nothing that I need to be spending diamonds on to reset to push further in exploration. I can just have these heroes here that didn't soak up too many memento coins that fill these spots for me that give me faction bonus and i have two solid teams that help me win in both the arenas uh, i do fairly well in champion duel i'm usually somewhere around top 10 i don't make it to top four i probably wouldn't anyway if i had straight pvp build but maybe someday since my heroes are leveling faster than other players. But anyway, this is a way that you can still maintain two very strong and useful lineups while being focused on one primary lineup to push that exploration as far as you can. Also having that one primary lineup is great for the arena. It's great for combat against other players. You can just use your one lineup and crush them, or you can split into two lineups and work with that against players that are a little bit smaller than you. So you can really make it work with just being all in on one lineup and then having five other heroes at OK level to supplement for not having a second lineup. You really don't need a third lineup at this point in the game. There's absolutely nothing other than if you want to send three attacks at a player just to hit them really quickly. That's really the only thing that a third lineup is useful for at this point. In Summit Arena, I would rather have two much stronger teams than three intermediate teams that aren't as strong, I can win many more Summit Arena battles with two strong teams than three mediocre teams. Same with Champion Duel, etc. As you can see here, this is Summit Arena. So even in an event that is designed for having three lineups, I am primarily focused on just one lineup have some subpar supplementary heroes to turn that one lineup into two lineups, and I'm still in the top three. So it's really unnecessary 
to divide your memento coins and all your other resources into three lineups when you could just be focusing one lineup get way stronger way quicker level up your heroes really fast get them to 100 and then not have to worry about exploration anymore and go right into building up your three pvp builds while you have that income from your memento coins so while we watch one of my subpar mixed lineups in the summit arena defeat delitrix one of the biggest money spenders on our rival server be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this content if you have any questions about what was discussed feel free to ask in the comments section below and to all you turdlings out there thank you for watching and stay solid.